afternoon and welcome to another edition of Book Talk from the Pflugerville Public Library. Our first book today is a picture book called Jimmy Goblin Cannot Have a Monster for a Pet. Words by David Goodner and drawings by Louis Thomas. Jimmy is a young goblin who really wants a pet. Any pet. Will she get a bunny or a fish? You can see a bunch of bunnies in this picture. Will, or will she get something a little scarier, like a kraken or a dragon? You can see the dragon. You're going to have to read the book to find out. And if you like Ginny Goblin, be sure to check out the first book in this series. Ginny Goblin is not allowed to open this box. Our next book is part of the early reader series Pedro by Fran Minushkin. This one is called Pedro and the Shark. Pedro in this book is on a trip to the aquarium when he gets separated from his class. Will he find them or will be he stuck with the shark forever? The interior illustrations are awesome. There are 17 books in this series so plenty to choose from if you like it. Fans of the series may also want to check out the Katie Wu series, also by Fran Minushkin. Our beginner chapter book this week is Juana and Lucas by Juana Medina. Juana is a young girl living in Bogota, Colombia with her dog Lucas. Juana is very funny and dramatic. You can see in some of the pictures here how dramatic she can be. She's also very opinionated. Some good things include Lucas, her friend Julie, Brussels sprouts, and of course Bogota. Things that she thinks are not that good include her uniform, which is itchy, and learning English. Juana has been having a hard time learning English, but now she is an incentive. Her abuela will be taking her to Spaceland in the U.S. where everyone speaks English. Will Wana finally be able to turn her grades around and learn English? Check out Wana and Lucas to find out. This next book is a favorite from my childhood, Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. It's a classic book set in Prince Edward Island, Canada in the 1800s. Marilla and Matthew Cuthbert want to adopt an orphan boy to help out around the farm. But what they get instead is Anne Shirley, a girl with red hair, a temper, and a ton of imagination. Throughout the book, Anne has lots of adventures with her friends and foes alike, and it's really fun. This book was originally published in 1908, so some of the text may be challenging for younger readers, but it's in a good way. Anne's character has a way of describing things with a very rich vocabulary, which really adds to the charm of the book. If you read this book and find that you are a kindred spirit with Anne, there are seven more books in the series and many more other books by Ella Montgomery. Our next book is a juvenile graphic novel that I just absolutely love and it came out last year. The OK Witch by Emma Stein Kellner. Moth Hush lives in Founders Bluff, Massachusetts with her single mom. She's always been fascinated by magic, which her mom has really discouraged. Well, it turns out her mom is hiding a family secret. Moth is descended from a line of witches. The artwork in this book is amazing. The expressions on Moth and the other characters' faces are just truly priceless. Throw in a talking cat, a grandmother who's several hundred years old, and an ill-fated school play, and you have a wonderful graphic novel for all ages. I hope you pick up and enjoy The OK Witch. For our teen readers this week, I recommend Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. 
In this fantasy novel, orphaned Elizabeth has been raised in a magical library. When a dangerous book escapes, she gets blamed for the disaster. Elizabeth must join forces with a sorcerer to try and clear her name and save the libraries that she loves. I read this book in one sitting. It was so good. The world building was fantastic and the characters were so believable. There's humor, danger, action and adventure, and a heroine everyone will love. This book is perfect for fans of Naomi Novik and other high fantasy writers. Finally, I'd like to recommend a graphic novel, Apollo, by Matt Fitch, Chris Baker, and Mike Collins. Last year was the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. This is the story of the Apollo 11 mission to land the first humans on the moon. It's told from the perspective of the astronauts, but you do get some insight into their family and friends as well as some of the famous people of the time, such as President Nixon. During the mission, the astronauts flash back to memories of how they got to that point in history. The authors also place the moon landing in its historical context with information about the war in Vietnam. This book is definitely meant for teens and up as there's some adult language and mature situations mentioned. If you've missed any of our book recommendations, they'll be archived on the library's YouTube channel. That's all for now. Check back this time next week when Amanda will have some more recommendations.